Despite never having won the league, West Ham are one of the most well-liked teams in England. They are a pillar of British football, with a long history and a devoted passionate following. East London, England, is home to Premier League football team West Ham United. Famous for producing great England internationals like Frank Lampard, Joe Cole, Rio Ferdinand, and Michael Carrick, the club is well known for its youth system. West Ham is also well known for a number of legendary players, such as World Cup champions from 1966 Bobby Moore, Sir Jeff Hurst, and Martin Peters, all of whom came from the club's academy. Early Club History Thames Ironworks, the predecessor to West Ham, was created in 1895. The team's name was changed to West Ham United in 1900, yet they continue to refer to themselves as the Irons and the Hammers. Up until their entry into the Football League in 1919, West Ham United competed in the Southern and Western Leagues. West Ham participated in the inaugural FA Cup final at the original Wembley Stadium in 1923 after being promoted to the top division. In that game, which became known as the White Horse Final, Bolton Wanderers won 2-0 after mounted police, including one on a white horse, had to clear the crowd from the field prior to kickoff. The final that year was attended by up to 300,000 people, according to estimates. The Golden Years West Ham United experienced success after Ron Greenwood was appointed as manager, with contributions from some of the team's most recognisable players. West Ham won the FA Cup in 1964 by defeating Preston North End 3-2 in the final. Jeff Hurst was a member of the Hammers team, which was led by Bobby Moore. The Hammers won the European Cup Winners' Cup the next season. Alan Seeley scored both goals in the team's 2-0 victory over 1860 Munich in the final, which also featured Moore, Hurst, and Peters. When John Lyle succeeded Greenwood as manager in 1974, he too had success to his credit. In the 1975 FA Cup final, West Ham United defeated Fulham 2-0, with Alan Taylor scoring both goals. Frank Lampard Sr., the player whose son would go on to break Chelsea's goal-scoring record, was in that day's Hammers squad. West Ham advanced to the European Cup Winners' Cup final in 1976 but fell to Anderlecht 4-2 in the final. In 1980, West Ham won the FA Cup once more thanks to a rare-headed goal by Sir Trevor Brooking, a player who also came from the team's academy and played 647 times for the club. Captain Billy Bonds, who played a record-breaking 799 times for the team, collected the cup for the second time. The boys from 86 The West Ham team from 1986 has never been crowned Premier League champions. Their highest placing was third in the 1985-86 campaign, behind winners Liverpool and Everton. The Hammers went on an 18-game unbeaten streak during the season, hammering Newcastle 8-1 in the process. The league's most productive strike duo that season was Frank McAvenny, 26, and Tony Cotty, 20, who combined for 46 goals. The team became known as the Boys of 86 and is now regarded by supporters as one of the greatest to ever don the claret and blue jersey. Only 13 regular first-team players, including West Ham greats Phil Parks, Ray Stewart, Alvin Martin, and Alan Devonshire, were available to manager Lyle. Despite placing third, West Ham was barred from participating in the UEFA Cup the following year because English clubs were no longer allowed to play in European competitions following the Hazel Stadium tragedy. Promotions and relegations. Over the past four decades, West Ham United has acquired a solid understanding of promotions and relegations. Leroy Rossini scored 15 goals for the Hammers, but they were nonetheless dropped to Division 2 in 1988-89. West Ham was promoted back to Division 1 in 1990-1991, but was demoted once more the following year, missing out on the inaugural Premiership season. For the 1993-94 season, they received a promotion back to the top division. West Ham had just won the 1999 Intertoto Cup when the new millennium began. In the final, they defeated Mets 3-2 overall. During the Harry Redknapp period as manager, West Ham had a squad that was loaded with potential, but they failed to hold on to their finest players. In 2000, Rio Ferdinand left for Leeds United, and in 2001, 
Frank Lampard joined Chelsea. West Ham was demoted to the championship in 2002-03, and Joe Cole moved to Chelsea. They returned to the Premier League in 2005-06 after spending two seasons in the championship, but they also lost to Liverpool on penalties in the FA Cup final. Sam Allardyce served as the club's manager as it returned to the Premier League for the 2012-13 season following a catastrophic 2010-11 campaign in which West Ham placed 20th in the league. The move to the London Stadium Following a productive 2015-16 season in which they finished 7th in the Premier League behind a star-studded Dimitri Payet, West Ham moved to London Stadium in 2016. West Ham struggled to maintain the same level of success after Payet was compelled to go to Marseille in 2017. Slaven Bilic was fired as manager in November 2017 and was succeeded by David Moyes, who helped the team avoid relegation. The short-term contract for Moyes was not renewed, and Manuel Pellegrini, a former manager of Manchester City and Real Madrid, took over. Midway through the 2019-20 campaign, Moyes was once more summoned back to the London Stadium, this time to take Pellegrini's place as West Ham faced relegation. The team placed 16th under Moyes, five points above the relegation zone. However, it turned out that Moyes' return was a wise choice. The Scotsman managed an outstanding sixth-place finish with the Hammers in 2020-21, which culminated in qualification for the Europa League tournament the following season, after ensuring the team remained in the top division. Mikael Antonio, Jared Bowen, and Declan Rice helped Moyes West Ham have a successful season in 2021-2022, which saw them finish seventh in the Premier League and advance to the semi-finals of the Europa League. For the second consecutive season, they earned a spot in Europe, although this time it was for the Europa Conference League. 2022-23 season. They have been pretty impressive in this tournament and are currently set for a semi-final against AZ Alkmaar of Holland. Unfortunately, the league form has been poor, but they should avoid relegation which at one time looked doubtful. West Ham's biggest rivals. West Ham's fiercest enemies in the past have been Millwall, whose fans have been involved in several violent, and occasionally fatal, incidents, relating to this match. The rivalry dates back to the early 1900s, and both sets of supporters, who are mainly dock workers at shipyards, work for separate businesses. Chelsea in West London and Tottenham Hotspur in North London are bitter rivals that frequently lead to fights between fans that involve hooligans. The fans. West Ham supporters are renowned for being partisan and fervent, Every game features the more than 100-year-old club hymn, I'm Forever Blowing Bubbles, which is sung by the fans in this and the next scene. The intercity firm, ICF, is the notorious thug organization linked to West Ham. The ICF, which was mostly active in the 1970s, 1980s, and 1990s, served as an inspiration for numerous publications as well as the Oscar-winning actors Gary Oldman in The Firm, Green Street, and Cass. West Ham's Finances West Ham are the 17th most valuable football team on the planet according to Forbes' May 2019 calculation, with a value of $616 million. David Sullivan and David Gold are the club's owners. Major sponsors for the Hammers include Umbro and Betway, and the 60,000-seat London Stadium enables the team to maximize matchday earnings. However, prior to the most recent Forbes calculations, West Ham's value decreased 18% in a year. We hope you enjoyed our brief history of West Ham United. If you did, please subscribe as it helps our channel grow so we can give you more content.